Hello and welcome to the Drew Roth Show alongside Purdue Soccer Head Coach Drew Roth. I'm the team's Communications Director, Charlie Healy, an NCAA Tournament edition of the show. Drew, first of all, how does that sound? We're getting ready for the NCAA Tournament on Saturday. Pretty exciting. Yeah, has a good ring to it. Yeah. That's uh, what we were uh, shooting for uh, preseason. We talked about our goals and um, take it day by day, and that's what we've done. And it uh, feels good to be here and looking forward to the challenge on Saturday. It's been an exciting week for the program. Started on Monday afternoon with the NCAA selection show. First of all, how did it feel to to see the Purdue name pop up on the screen? And second of all, you know, addressing the team, you got a little emotional. Can you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, I think uh, you know, obviously, it was a great feeling. Um, you know, that's something that I've experienced before. Um, you know, uh, just not at Purdue, and I know you know it's a it's a special day. Um, so many great teams, great players, great coaches uh, across the country. That if you can, uh, you know, be in that field of 64, it's just a, a really great accomplishment. And it's been a long time at Purdue, you know, about 12 years. We've been here for seven of them. So uh, we've been building the program, and we've been, uh, you know, really working hard to create something special and uh, trying to build something that lasts. And uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it, it hasn't happened as quickly as we'd hoped. So um, those are the moments that you. Uh, just say you got to keep going, and eventually, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get this thing sorted out. So it was a big moment. Just a lot of people in that room that have been, you know, very supportive of our program and our players, um, including, you know, my family, of course, and you know, everybody in the Purdue family. So uh, you get them all together on a big day like that. Uh, you know, certainly uh, uh, there are some emotions that are involved for sure. Yeah, great, great evening to celebrate a, a great season and, and everything, that, everything that went into the to the years and, mm-hmm. and get us get us ready for Saturday. Let's look ahead to, to Saturday, of course. Mm-hmm. Saturday night, 7 p.m. at Folk Field, the Boilermakers host host Loyola Chicago. What do you know about that team? They're the uh, Missouri Valley Conference re- regular season and tournament champions, making their fourth consecutive NCAA tournament appearance. They're a team with a lot of experience that knows how to how to win on this on this stage absolutely uh you know that experience obviously is something that you notice right away if uh you know some of those players are going into their you know second third or maybe even fourth NCAA tournament that's a team that um you know is not going to be uh in awe of the the big moment so that's um you know something that you have to take into account but um you know done a little research of course and um you know the very athletic team a team that's used to playing on the front foot team that scores a lot of goals I think the last you know four or five games they've they tallied close to 20 goals or something. So, you know, that's that's pretty impressive. And then, uh, you know, have only conceded, I believe, about 10 goals all season. So obviously you have a team that's, uh, you know, confident and knows how to win, and they seem like they're really on a roll. So um, certainly, you know, as I tell the team, um, they're, they're a tough group to play. They're a talented group. And um, the good thing is I think our, our players understand that uh, NCAA tournament, everybody's good. Everybody's talented. Everybody there uh, knows how to win. So. Um, we're just really excited for it and uh, you know, have a lot of respect for, uh, for the loyal team. Let's take a look back uh, briefly to the non-conference slate because you played a lot of teams that were coming off good seasons last spring mm-hmm. in terms of conference champions and NCAA tournament teams. The Boilermakers played really well in that non-conference slate a tough, against a lot of tough opponents. Mm-hmm. Can, can that experience against teams that know how to win help you on, on Saturday? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we always try to challenge ourselves before Big Ten play because you have to prepare for Big Ten play. And it is nice to, to play teams that, you know, as you mentioned, kind of know how to win. Um, you know, those teams that we played pre-conference, so that it's Gonzaga and St. Louis and, you know, the teams of that nature, uh, we know that they're going to go to their conference and they're going to do extremely well. And, uh, um, you know, just uh, they, they show you some, some things that, uh, you know, prepare you for Big Ten play. I mean, all those teams have something. Uh, that you have to prepare for something different, and, and loyal is no different. There's a couple things that um, we have to be really prepared for that we've seen this year, but but some ways you know it, it can be a little bit different. So uh, I just think the uh, the great thing about the schedule we play is just uh, you know there shouldn't be too many surprises, and we should be prepared for everything that comes our way. Uh, now of course we have to execute and we have to uh, you know pay attention to the details as always, but you know there's certainly uh, there's nothing out there that um, you know we haven't experienced so far. Coming, the team is coming off a tough 4-1 loss to Michigan in the Big Ten semifinal uh, last Thursday. Mm-hmm. Guys came home, flew home on Friday, immediately went to practice at Folk Field, watched some film, and I think sort of quickly moved, moved past that game. How much did that help, and, and was there a key moment in, in that moving, moving on phase you know, on, on Friday that has helped the team in the last couple of days in practice? Yeah, I think so. I think as a, as a coach sometimes, um, you know, you, 
there's nothing wrong with a little bit of a wake up call. Um, you know, I don't think we played poorly, but I think I think Michigan was outstanding, and I thought we were a little bit off the pace. And when you combine those two, um, you know, you're going to have a tough time getting a result. So, um, you know, as I told the team, it's you know, if this helps us tighten up a few things and pay a little more attention to certain details, um, then then it can be you know a blessing in disguise. And um, you know, if uh, we're going to find some things out that. Uh, uh, that we need to fix. Let's let's do it now, and let's not wait until you know NCAA tournament. Um, because at that point, um, you know the season season's over if you don't fix some of those things. So, um, you know, I thought it was it was it was fine, and uh, you know, got after it right away. Like I said, wanted to kind of put that one behind us. Uh, every team has that kind of day throughout a season. It's very rare, and uh, like I said, we played a very good team, and uh, you know, there's no shame in taking a loss. It's just do you learn from it? Do you bounce back and realize that? Uh, you know, you correct a couple things, and uh, you know we can we feel we can compete with, you know, just about anybody if we uh, are at our best. I, I wasn't at practice on Friday or Saturday. Uh, Sunday and Monday were, were days off. Tuesday team seemed normal and clearly had moved yeah. past that. Is that senior leadership, or is that just sort of the maturity and uh, the sort of maturity of everyone on that team, all 30, 30 girls? I think it's the maturity of everyone, but I think the seniors definitely set that that tone. You know, it's just. Uh, um, after every loss, you know, we've only lost a you know, handful of games this year. Um, they've done an incredible job saying, hey, guys, no excuses. You know, uh, it's easy to point fingers or blame the referee or say, you know, it was too radiant things. You know, we've all been there uh, in athletics. You know, it's, it's an emotional thing. Um, but it takes a mature group to say, you know what, um, we, we just weren't quite good enough in a couple areas, and, and let's fix it, and let's make sure that, uh, you know, this feeling that we have where we – you know, like I said, we've we've all lost games. You know, that's part of it. But it's when you feel like maybe you didn't put your best foot forward. And those those are the only times I think uh, we feel disappointed as a group. And um, you know, this group's done a fantastic job of just uh, taking those moments and saying, okay, let's fix it. And sure enough, they've bounced back really well. And uh, they haven't let uh, some of those tough tough moments you know define them or or carry through um, you know longer than they need to. So uh, soccer's a game where uh, you know you have to have a short memory and you have to say, you know, hey, win, lose, or draw. There's another one coming up. As long as you have another game, uh, you know you got to you got to get your mind right. And you got to be ready to go. So um, I think they've done a fantastic job. And uh, as a coach, that's that's what you want uh, because uh, uh, as coaches, we've been there. We know we know the things to say and 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 in those situations. But when you have players that really believe that they can turn it around after a tough day, um, you know that's a sign that you have a winning program. Absolutely. Finally, playing at home, Folk Field. The games will be certainly be decided between the the 22 players on, on the field. But how mm -hmm. important is that that home field advantage going to be? Being able to to uh, sleep in our own beds on yeah. Friday night and just ha having the, the familiarity of of home. Well, it's huge, and I know it's going to be a little chilly, so it's nice to have all uh, all all your layers available, you yeah. know, in the locker room and everything, and not not have to take them with you on the road. But uh, it, it's a huge uh, advantage, you know, and and we're thrilled to be able to play uh, at home. Um, at the beginning of the year, we talked about some of our goals, which, of course, uh, the NCAA tournament was was a major one. But also, you know, mentioned just hey, you know, if you, in that top 32, there's a great chance that you can you can host a home game, and uh, you know, with, with such a long, uh, you know, kind of drought in between appearances, uh, uh, we didn't just want to get in, but we wanted to be able to you know share that moment with with our supporters and. Uh, and, and play on one of the best, uh, you know, the best best fields in the in the yeah. nation, right? Uh, so that was a, a, a huge, um, you know, uh, day for us once we realized we were in, in the tournament, but also hosting. So um, I feel like it's going to be, you know, a really electric atmosphere, and uh, you know that support gives our players energy and confidence, and uh, we're just thrilled to be able to, uh, you know, compete, uh, you know, here at Folk. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll be a great night. Looking forward to seeing everyone out there Saturday night at 7 p.m. in the NCAA tournament first round against Loyola. And it'll be great uh, not only for the team to get that NCAA stage, but also our field. Nick, our, our turf manager, does a great job. He's as excited as anyone to see, uh, to see Folk Field get that spotlight. Finally, when I ask you about National Signing Day on Wednesday, we've uh, announced a great signing class and ranked number 19 in the country. How are you? I know we're, we're all locked in on Saturday, but also looking ahead to the future. The future also is bright. How, are you, how excited are you to have, have those Boilermakers join the program? Well, extremely excited. You know, just as you mentioned, we're really focused on this week and what we're doing. Um, but, you know, you also have to look to the future and, and, you know, it's something that we want to continue to build on. And these type of weeks that we're having uh, are, are obviously uh, are really enjoyable and, and, and something that we want to continue 
um, in the future. So therefore the future is very important and the future is very bright with this group um, and uh, I think they'll uh, fit in extremely well with what we do and a uh, very talented group so uh, we're thrilled about that class signing and uh, um, you know want to make sure that uh, uh, the bar has been set we want to see bring in a group that's going to continue to try to raise it I think they will yeah absolutely an exciting week overall for the Purdue soccer program not only with the NCAA tournament but some future Boilermakers joining the program as well Drew look forward to seeing you Saturday night at Folk Field in the NCAA tournament first round sounds great thank you Charlie yep Welcome back to the Drew Roth Show. We're joined by fifth-year senior defender Maya Lambert. Maya, you're getting ready for the NCAA tournament. How excited are you for this new new part of uh, your career and, and for this program? Yeah, I'm super excited. I think we've been waiting for this for a long time, and we finally got the breakthrough to the NCAA's. And practice this week has just been awesome. Everyone's vibes are amazing, and just can't wait for Saturday. You and, and Sarah Griffith have been waiting a little longer than anyone else, uh, along with the eight seniors. But you're, you and Sarah are fifth years. What's that been like to see the growth of this program over the course of your five years from, from 2017 when you arrived on campus to now? Mm -hmm. So in 2017, our main goal was just to make the Big Ten tournament. And we did, and that was awesome, and everyone was super happy. We hadn't made the Big Ten tournament in, I think it was like six or seven, maybe even 10 years before that. So we accomplished that goal, and it's really cool that after that, our next stage was to make the NCAA tournament. And on our last year with the team, we were able to accomplish that as well. So it's really cool to see everyone grow and just develop into amazing players and people as well. Is there a, a time or two that you can pinpoint that helped this this team grow, the, this current group that you have, and whether it was something this year or in the last couple of years, because the senior class has been so instrumental to, to this year's success, but is there something throughout your career that you've seen like, hey, we just took a giant step? Mm -hmm. I think my sophomore year, so the senior class is freshman year technically, was probably our hardest season. We didn't do too well in the standings. All of the games were like by one goal or tied maybe, so just a few bad bounces, and we kind of really all came together after that and knew that eventually we were going to be a main part of this team and we were going to be the upperclassmen kind of to lead everybody else in. And we kind of really took that to heart and worked on our leadership skills and just banded together. It's been an exciting week for you guys. Coming off a, a tough loss at, against Michigan in the Big Ten semifinal last, last Thursday, let's talk specifically about this week. Monday, the NCAA Tournament Selection Show, you had a great party with, with uh, your teammates and some athletic department staff, then practice, and then uh, Wednesday on the field, the NCAA logo, uh, you saw that at, at Folk Field. What's this week been like? Is a little bit of celebration and excitement gearing up to Saturday, but also a lot of preparation. What's that, mm -hmm. what's that been like? So Friday, we flew home from Rutgers. We watched film on the Michigan game immediately. We didn't play our best. Michigan had a really good game, so we just kind of wanted to get our mistakes out of the way and put that in the back of our mind. We knew that our season was not over, which was awesome and amazing, and we were really excited for what's to come. But we needed to take a few minutes to learn from that experience and where we could have improved upon. So we did that, went out and practiced, and we never held our heads low or anything like that. Monday we were super excited. Saturday was a great day to get out there and practice. And then Monday was when we saw our names on the screen. It was, it was something else. Well, can you go into a little more into that, that celebration on Monday? Mm -hmm. You guys are all gathering, watching the selection show together. Um, we sort of knew what was going to happen. We knew, you knew you were going to make the tournament. You felt pretty good about hosting. but So there wasn't a ton of suspense after this 12-year uh, layoff from making the NCAA tournament, but it still had to have been exciting to hear, hear your name, Purdue, and see that on the screen. Yeah, I was super excited. I mean, with soccer, there's no such thing as certainty. So we had no idea where we were going to be in the bracket, who we might be able to play. And we were really hoping for another game at Folk Field, which we got. Folk Field is the best. The NCAA sign is out there. Shout out, Nick. Looks amazing. But it was nice to have our name called in the first half of the bracket so we didn't have to wait the entire time for it to come up. So that was, that was a little bit of relief. Yeah, a, a quick show, uh, just rolling through the 64 teams, but it was was certainly nice to, to get that out of the way and, yep. and uh, be, be able to relax and watch the rest of the show and, and think a little bit about Loyola. I know you haven't watched film yet, but do you know anything about Loyola? Do you, you, I know you're from Illinois. Do you have any friends who, who are on the team or were on the team? I do. One of my really good friends actually graduated last year, but there's a few of us. It's really like a Chicago reunion, I would say. A couple kids from me and Tegan's club team are on it, and I know Griff knows a lot of people, so it's kind of just like battle of the Chicago land area soccer teams. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be fun to have a, a local team that we haven't played uh, in – 
I think since 2009 was the last time Purdue and Loyola squared off, so that'll be fun uh, Saturday night. Let's talk a little bit about the fan support this year because it's truly been like nothing else. It started with over 2,000 fans against Kentucky on the season opener. It's just been lively crowds ever since the formation of the Folk Field Fanatics and their safety Mm -hmm. vest uh, behind the goal. How important is that fan support going to be Saturday with with just a crucial game online? Uh, Super important. I think we all play better when there are people out there. And it's just so nice having people in the stands and in the crowd and even – I mean, we started off so strong with Kentucky when everyone was there, and then it started pouring. People stayed, double overtime, people were staying, went late into the night. So it was kind of just a big turning point for us and just having that momentum and the home crowd advantage. This will most likely, we're not 100% certain, there's still a lot of things to, to worry about, most importantly, winning your game on, on Saturday, but most likely be your last game at Folk Field. Are you thinking about that all? Is that in the back of your mind? I know you're, it it's, can be a little tough, you're trying to win a game, but also uh, looking back, the, your career sort of flashed before your eyes. Yeah, no, it definitely, I definitely have been thinking about it a little, I think all of the seniors have. It's something that's very sentimental. I mean, Folk Field is really the best place to play. And I'm not saying that from a bias standpoint. The field's the best, the crowd's the best. I mean, there's truly nowhere I'd rather be. So it's really nice. It's also nice knowing that it is probably our last game. So there's not really that uncertainty about, well, will it be? Will it not? Will I be back? So I think we're all just ready to hopefully go out on a good note and just give it our all. So many times this year, the seniors have been what's held this program, you know, not necessarily held it together, but through the, the few ups and downs that the team has had, this has been the seniors to, to bring this group together. This is the seniors potentially playing their last game. Is that going to be the, the upperclassmen sort of stepping in and, and telling these nine seniors, like, hey, let's, let's go out and win a game and not worry about potentially this being your last game at Folk Field? Yeah, no, I think the whole team's just going to step up. Everyone's so excited. I don't think anyone's really thinking in the back of their mind, like, Oh no! Like this is terrifying. Like we're all just super excited to be here. That's that's a good good uh, situation to be in too. Yeah. Just ha- having that general excitement. Hopefully, ha- we'll have a big crowd at Folk Field, 7 p.m. against Loyola and the NCAA tournament first round. That feels pretty good to say that. Doesn't it does. It? <laughs> Sounds <laughs> yeah. good. So so it will certainly be an exciting evening at Folk Field. We hopefully you all can join us. Tickets are available at PurdueSports.com or at the Folk Field box office. So for Maya Lambert, thank you so much for joining us. You're a seasoned veteran on the show and taking over as the sole guest. So appreciate you joining us here today (laughs) and look forward to seeing you out at Folk Field on Saturday night. Yep. Thank you, Charlie.